and we're back welcome to fetch quests my name is joshua and in this video i want to show you if it's worth hiring new units and using them versus the named story characters that you can recruit as you play along in tactics ogre reborn so we'll take a look at stat spread and also compare in battle to see maybe if the uh, distribution of stats really matters and see what those points kind of add up to so thank you for being here. I appreciate you very much and let's get right into it. Starting off, as you play this game, you're gonna come across really great characters that you'll probably want to keep on your team. What I'm wanting to look into is the unnamed custom recruits that you can just buy uh, and then change their class uh, into anything you want. And yes, you can do that with story characters as well, which is pretty neat. But you know, I'm just saying, the story characters are good, but how good are they? Uh, like the portraits are different, but I was playing the game believing, hey, maybe their stats are significantly higher. And if I have an archer on my team, it doesn't make sense to use them instead of Ari Cell. So I'm gonna bring Ari Cell in and, and get rid of my custom character. But the point of this video is actually to look at stats and see if there's any noticeable or significant difference that we can tell when you go into a battle. I've done some research on my own that I want to talk about, but some of this video will also be new to me, so let's find out together. So far in my testing, the greatest disparity in stats that I've seen, including HP, MP, and then all the way from strength down to resistance, just essentially adding up all those stats, because you know you can go back, go back in, to uh, higher recruits and their stats are different. 317 HP, 80 MP, 316 with 79 MP, strength 35, strength 34, strength 38. So their stats change, but I was wondering, hey, are these values significant? And is it worth really <laughs> going back uh, out and back in to see if you can get like the most OP character? And honestly, the, the difference that I found, the biggest difference in total stats was three points. That includes, you know, you can have 314 HP, 322 HP, high numbers, and only three points. So it's pretty balanced. All that to say it's pretty balanced. Whether you want to be a Valkyrie or a Cleric or a Wizard, the stat spread, for the most part, is the same in every class, if you were wondering. I was also curious about simply... You know, strength, vitality, dexterity, down to resistance, not including HP and MP to see, hey, maybe stats there uh, make a difference as far as your defenses or how much damage you can deal. And the greatest disparity I found there was five points for what it's worth. For example, we have this warrior here. And if we add up all of his stats, we get 670. And this is a character with high strength, high vitality, Let's take a look at this cleric here. This character's total stats, HP, MP, strength all the way through resistance, totals 669. Literally one point different than the warrior. And just in case you're curious, let's uh, let's take a look at this wizard. 672 points. So between 669 and 672, total stats, a three point spread. I don't really think that's significant. Also something else you might be curious to know, I did some testing. So let's say I want my archer, which naturally is gonna have a high dexterity value, uh, or high agility value. Let's say I wanna get an archer uh, that has the highest dexterity I can get. I thought maybe I can cheese the game a little bit by picking a different class that has high dexterity and then transitioning into an archer to see maybe what would happen there. So um, maybe, let's see, if I look at a cleric, right? A cleric has low dexterity. I actually don't know how high his values would go to. All right, here we go. This cleric has pretty high dexterity, 37. Let's go ahead and just recruit Benedict. And my thought was, hey, if I change their class into an archer, won't I get some, uh, some stat growth, some stat bonuses there? Let's take a look. So if I go to change class and I'll make him into an archer, Wow, look at that, I can have 42 dexterity. But in reality, if we add up these points, our total stats, HP and MP included, are 668. 
which is right in line with the other numbers we were seeing, 669, 670. So you can't really cheese as far as your new recruits at level one trying to get super high stats. Also, you'll note in any class that you want to change to, the plus and minuses spread are always even, which is pretty interesting. So as you see there, if I change them to a knight, strength and vitality go up three and seven respectively. Intelligence and mind go down three and seven. So it's an even distribution. You're never going to gain or lose total stats. And also, if you notice, your HP and MP stay the same, no matter what class you pick. If I want to change Benedict into a Warlock, my intelligence is going up seven, which is awesome. But hey, vitality down three, mind down four, seven points, which I actually think is a good thing. It, it allows you to literally pick your favorite classes. You can build your team how you want. And apart from the skills and the equipment that they can have and, and how they naturally perform in battle, like obviously you're not going to bring a cleric in to physically do heavy damage um, <laughs> normally, but it allows you to build your team how you want and play to their strengths. And just because a ninja is good or a knight is tanky, it doesn't mean you're going to be faulted for not having them in your party. There are plenty of other character types to choose from and you can build your team how you like. I think that's great. All right, now let's move on to something else. I have two different recruits here. They're both at level one. We have this uh, Owen guy. And of course I had to make myself Joshua. <laughs> you may not know this, uh, the logo of the channel is an otter, which is my favorite animal. And one of my favorite class or archetypes is a ranger type um, or a rogue type. So the fetch quests logo is an otter with a bow and a dagger, which is why I was super excited to try to get a rogue on my team. And <laughs> I'm not going to bore you with the details, but no lie, I literally spent an entire day over eight hours playing the game, trying to make further progress into chapter three and then chapter four to try to unlock rogue marks only to find out they remove those from this version of the game. So <laughs> a lot of wasted time, but nonetheless, I'm going to create an archer here. And what I want to do is use these charms, strength charm, vitality, dexterity. You don't come across a ton of these in the game. And in fact, I haven't used one in my playthrough at all. I've just been saving them up. And this is what I happen to have. I'm, I'm a few battles into chapter four. But I've always wondered, like, I only have three strength charms. And as we can see, my strength goes up one point. Vitality, it goes up one point. Dexterity, one point. And I'm like, if I just increase their stats by three points, three points, three points, intelligence isn't going to help me really in this build. But is that significant? Is that going to make a difference in the long run? So that's why I have two uh, characters. Here's Owen and Joshua. And I try to get them with very similar stats. I got 323 HP on Owen, 323 on Joshua, 79 MP, 80. Um, but I'm really wanting to look at strength and dexterity. So they both have 35 and 39, 35 and 39. So let me just go ahead and use literally all of my charms. And then I want to level up both of these characters. And I want to see, is there stat growth depending on your character class? I would assume that maybe my mind and intelligence don't increase like strength and dexterity and agility would increase for an archer. But let's find out together. Oh, you cannot do this in bulk, can you? <laughs> I'll come back after I increase all of the stats. All right, so here we go. I've used up all my charms, and something that's pretty neat is your HP does does not go up only one point every time you use it. So uh, this level one Owen, I also changed his element to fire so you can differentiate them, but uh, he's got 323 HP versus my level one Joshua with 413 HP. Pretty significant, I would say. We'll see if that plays into your overall stat growth, but everything here is going to be higher. So from 35 strength to 38. Also of note, an impressive intelligence stat. <laughs> My magic attack there is 100 <laughs> versus 86, which won't do me any good, but hey, I got it. I'm going to level them up off screen, come back, and let's see if there's actually a difference in stat growth because of your base points, or at least because of the charms that I use. 
Because again, I'm wanting to see if they really make a difference. They're kind of hard to come by. You don't get very many. So I'm curious. Let's find out. Here we are at level 22. I noticed the HP gains were the same for Joshua and Owen. 704 versus 794. So that's still a 90 HP difference, which was the same as before. And their MP is exactly the same. I think before Joshua was one point lower, so yeah, he gained a point on him. Something interesting though, and I don't know if it's because of some sort of stat growth because of the, the charms, but now the total stats as far as strength, vitality, for Owen were 797, whereas for Joshua it was 839. And that difference is 42 points here at level 22 versus only 35 point difference when they were at level one. Now I wanna put some gear on them. I wanna put the same exact gear. I wanna see how their stats look. I equip both with the composite bow, Alderhelm, Brigandine, Nomad Bracers, and Chain Leggings plus one. There was no change to their base stats, but something I do wanna point out are the stats at the top, which we haven't taken a look at yet. This is basically modified for your level and the equipment that you have on. These are the points that really matter when you go into battle. And again, the only difference is I gave Joshua a few more charms that I had lying around. And we have 571 for range attack versus Owen's 555. And as an archer, seems significant. We'll find out. I want to take him into battle. Also, let's look at the physical resistances. 285 for Owen versus 297 for Joshua. And... 237 magical resistance versus 226. To me, that stands out, but let's see how they play in battle. So what I wanna do off camera, but let me fight a few battles and see how high I can get them. And then we'll come back and compare their stats again. Woo, that took forever. All right, and we're back. As you can see, we're at level 32 now. Stats are much higher than before, but I will tell you between strength, vitality, dexterity, there's been no difference. Uh, it's still a 42 point spread. So for what it's worth, as far as your base stats go, there isn't any sort of growth or modifiers there as you level up. But of course, in every other aspect, everything that Joshua has is higher than Owen, of course. Um, but we're looking at 667 for the ranged uh, attack power and 685 for Joshua. Now I was curious as well. See, we're 32, 32. Ari Cell is actually level 31. Look at the difference in HP. So this is obviously a named character, a story character. She has 889 HP, which is pretty low. She's fairly squishy, I'll be honest. Typically, you'll keep your ranged uh, units uh, in the rear, but they still get hit, right? Even Owen with 978. But check out Joshua, 1,078 HP. You did it, my boy. Crossed over 1,000 HP. Something neat here is when they were level 22, the HP difference between them was 90. Uh, but now between 978 and 1078, there is a 100 point HP difference. So something is being factored in. So take that for what you will. Uh, but it does seem that maybe, hey, maybe it's those charms that I used and it's modifying something in the background. Maybe not the base stats per se, but there's some sort of calculation going on that's affecting, I mean, at least HP. But anyways, yeah, Joshua with 1,078, significantly more HP than Cell at 889. She does have a higher ranged attack, 707, which is definitely higher than Owen and a little bit higher than Joshua. Um, but again, maybe the stats, let me add up her total actually while I'm at it, because looking at Joshua's physical and magical resistances, I have 363 for physical. She has 356, and I did put the same gear on her as well. Uh, and her magical resistance, 283 versus my 297. So with my HP and my resistances, I will last longer in battle than her. Also keep in mind, my bow skill is only level seven. So maybe y'all can tell me in the comments below, but I'm not exactly sure if this factors into the stats on this screen. Actually, if I remove, yeah. Look at that. If I take away that skill, it does change it. Okay, so keep this in mind. My skill is only seven versus Aricel, which is at 29. 
I removed all the skills, so she no longer has her bow skill. I think it was giving her an additional uh, 20. Yeah, an additional 20 to her uh, range attack stat. So remove that from Aricel, Owen, and Joshua. And something of note is stat-wise, Joshua does have more stats than Aricel. And it's thanks to all of those charms that I added. But that brings us back to one of our original questions is, hey, what if I create uh, or what if I hire a new recruit, want to build them up, and maybe I'm not giving them any charms, uh, right? Because assuming that you use them as you get them, maybe you don't have any to use or you just wanted to really uh, compare how viable are they. So looking at Owen and Aricel, same equipment, uh, no skills and no charms. You got about the same HP. Owen has one HP more. Uh, and actually Owen has six more MP, so for what that's worth. But one of the things that I noticed really is your units will still increase as they level up their stats in intelligence and mind, even if maybe that class doesn't need those stats. So Owen has 134 intelligence and 125 mind. I mean, he has a higher intelligence stat than strength and vitality versus Aricel, what they did with her, and why arguably she's a little bit better, is total stat-wise, she does have 12 more points than Owen. And that distribution spread is basically just smarter. Her intelligence is only 121. Uh, you don't need it for an archer. Uh, your intelligence is for offensive magic, and she's not going to have any equipped. And then your mind stat, the success of special skills, offensive, and defensive magic less useful here for an archer so her stat spread is better used basically so she's got a higher strength stat 139 versus 130 and a higher dexterity stat she's at 159 and he's at 153 also her uh, agility 146 and he's got 140 so just overall because of her stat spread is a little bit better than your generic characters that you build she is going to be better. So here with the same gear, her range attack is 687, is a 663. So now that is noticeable because if you recall with Joshua, his uh, range attack 680 versus 663. So I think that's pretty neat just to, to point out is you can still use a generic character. The named, maybe this is true for all of the named characters, but their stat spread makes more sense for that class. And so it's just better utilized. But when you do use your charms to kind of soup up the characters as you see fit, in this case, I dumped it all in Joshua, he does perform the same in some areas and then better in others. So 981 HP and she's only got 889. So about 100 point uh, of a difference there. Again, with no skills, just the same equipment. And he does have a higher resistance. He's got 135 resistance. He's got 130, so he'll be able to take uh, magical attacks better. In fact, looking at her uh, physical and magical resistances, 356, Owen's got 351, negligible maybe, and Joshua has 363. He's got the highest. And then looking at the magical resistances, Joshua's got 297, Owen's got 286, she's got 283. So Owen's got a better magical resistance than Aricel. So I just wanted to show that in this video. Generic characters, you can get away by playing the whole entire game with only generic characters if you wished. And if you want to use your charms to increase the character stats, you can do that as well. And depending on how much you add, it can be pretty significant. But I think that's a good call out is probably for the name characters, their stats are just better spread out. Zepan is a really good example. I know he's only level 15. But if you had another Berserker at the same exact level, uh, same skills uh, equipped or same gear, what have you, you'll notice the, the stat spread. His, his highest stat is going to be Strength, 97. And look at his Intelligence, 77. His mind is 74. That makes sense for him being a named story character. He's going to have a, a better stat distribution versus maybe a generic Berserker who probably would have higher Intelligence and higher Mind. And so you're going to be missing out on some of the points that could be assigned to things like strength or vitality or what have you. Let's go into battle now. 
This is probably the part you've been most looking forward to actual real world results and damage and things like that. So let's go into a battle uh, and I actually bring all three. Let's see what happens. I will say to make up for her squishiness, Aricel is pretty fast. So against this Enchantress back here, she's dealing 199. And then this Knight, she's dealing 106. All right, Joshua. Now he's dealing 179 to the Witch. 20 points less. But remember, uh, just keep in mind that he doesn't have as high of a bow skill. Into the Knight, Aricel is dealing 106. He's going to do 86. So again, 20 points less. Last but not least, we got Owen, and Owen's going to deal 161 to the Enchantress and 69 to the Knight. All right, well, that's pretty interesting. So Joshua was going to deal 179 to the Enchantress. Owen's dealing 161. That's 18 points of difference. I can only imagine that disparity is going to increase as their skill level in bows increases. So honestly, I would say, I mean, going back to the earlier question of whether the named story characters are just above and beyond going to be more powerful and just better to use, it really comes down to your personal taste. If you like Aricel as a character or Zepan as a character or Vice as a character, sure, use them. But I think what we're seeing here is there's there's pros and cons. Like Aricel is a squishier unit. She has less HP, less defense than my character Joshua that I made, or even less HP than Owen, who I didn't do anything to. And they're both, or rather, are all three are archers. So you really can play the game as you see fit with a party build as you see fit. And I think that's really awesome. And going back to the stat difference from the charms, is it significant? I would say it is. I would say it is. Um, again, overall, I have higher HP, I have better defenses, and I only had uh, three, what was it, three strength charms and three dexterity charms. So if I had even more, then the my attacks would be dealing even more damage than the vanilla counterpart like Owen. So I think it's worth it. Obviously, I spent all of them on just one character. So if you're given one to, to one character, and then one to a different one, and then one to yet another different one, maybe you're not going to see kind of those, those differences there. But if you did what I did, and you save them up, and you're just going to unload them on a character that you really like, I think it's worth it. And you can uh, really make that character special to you, and you can make them stand out amongst the other vanilla characters because they're going to be a little bit faster, a little bit bulkier, and deal a little bit more damage. I hope this helps you in some way. This was honestly a burning question that I had. And when I was thinking about which video I wanted to make next, which really quick pause, thank y'all so much. Um, at the time of this recording, I'm not quite at 1,000 subscribers, but we are getting there. Uh, hi, thank you. I uh, just wanted to interrupt my own video to tell y'all just how happy I am to announce Fetch Quest is now at 1,000 subscribers. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you other than thank you so much. Truth be told, I only do these videos because I feel like someone out there might find them helpful, they might find them useful, and it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort. And to see that hard work rewarded by comments, by likes, by y'all as subscribers to the channel, I can't even describe it, but from the bottom of my heart, I want you to know I appreciate you very much. From the beginning until now, into the future, y'all are the reason why I make these videos. When I started Fetch Quests earlier this year, so much has happened since then. Uh, just getting the house all ready, getting married, having my wife move in, and in between working a full-time job, just trying to take time to make YouTube videos. I had high hopes for the channel, 
But getting to 1,000 subscribers wasn't something I thought I could do even in the first year, but here we are. So I can't say it enough, thank you. If y'all continue to show the channel your love, I'll continue to make videos. That's the deal we got going on. All right, I'll let you go. I'll stop interrupting. Uh, we'll get back to the conclusion of this video, which by the way, if you've been watching all the way from the beginning till now, again, thank you. These are relatively long videos. So if you made it to this point, hey, you're awesome. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, and yeah, all right, <laughs> bye. And thank you again, thank you. I enjoy this game, I love it, I enjoy, oh. Owen just died. I was not paying attention. Hey, look at that. See, look how, see how uh, much stronger Joshua is. He was not even a target. <laughs> they, they targeted Owen instead. I bet they target Aricel next. This one was a little bit more niche, a little more specific uh, to kind of the game mechanics. Hey, you get these charms, you can increase stats. It's only one. It's only one point each time. Does it really matter? Does it make a difference? And I think this video goes to show it does and it can't. In addition to your archery skill, in this case, the archery skill, uh, for, sorry, the bow skill. Um, so whatever weapon you're gonna use, this skill does matter, but the charms also matter. And as you level up, there's some sort of hidden mechanic. We don't see it on the front end for some reason. Like we looked at their base stats and the difference between Joshua and Owen remained 42. We didn't see that change, yet he is significantly stronger. And right now, maybe he's only dealing 20 damage. But as they level up and even higher, you get up to level 45 and your bow skills continues to increase. That difference may become 50 and may become 60 points in addition to having more health and you're able to take more hits. And this is all for generic characters in this game. I think that's neat. I think that's really cool. Play the game as you see fit. And if you want to attempt something like I'm doing or you have a different experience, please leave it in the comments. Um, I wanted to check this out real time for y'all. Obviously I'm editing the video, but a lot of this really was with my real reactions because I hadn't seen it before and I was curious myself. Thank you all so much. I'll end the video there. Go out and do some fetch quests of your own because sometimes the rewards are worth it. Bye y'all.